All right. Hello, everybody. I know you know Jeffrey Olson. We already had one interview, but we had technical difficulties. And Jeffrey has done so well in so many areas that I, I invited him back so that we can get into those areas. How you doing tonight, Jeffrey? Yeah, I'm doing good, bro. Uh, You're looking good. You know, blessed, man. I, I, I feel good. You know what I mean? Not only do I look good, but I feel good. <laughs> Okay. Well, you know, I have to ask, hit it, hit us with some of those spoken words. I know you keep some on your mind. So we're going to do the, uh, uh, my definition of a man. All right. It's one of my favorite pieces, man, that I wrote. Uh, and, uh, this is probably one of the first ones you heard when we were in prison, if I'm not mistaken, it goes, um, my definition of a man can vary. But that's because I've had so many different points of view. And if I'm being completely honest, the 37 years I've been alive, I've only come across a few. And see, when I finally rose to be a man, I admit my time was well overdue. I mean, don't get me wrong. I walked around here with my chest out like I was one. But truthfully, I never really actually knew what it meant for me to be a man and the things that one had to pursue. Spent my life following broken examples who was trying to hold it together but didn't have the right glue. So as I grew older, I made my mistakes and thought that I could teach myself. But manhood is not a class you can take or something you can accumulate with wealth. You see, the day that I finally became a man was the day that I became a new creation. And the man that I am now wasn't taught through education, but formed through a revelation. This elevation I've experienced increases more with prayer and meditation, which brings a sensation far greater than any high or medication. You see, my dedication to succeed, that's a drive that comes from deep within. A drive that ignites this Holy Ghost fire from the spirit that I've been given. You see, I wrote these words for the men whose past was a lot like mine. The ones who hustled full time, chasing that money, but in the end couldn't keep a single dime. And when I chose to leave it behind, it was because it started to dictate my future. And I know where a lot of you guys are thinking right now, because believe me, my feelings are mutual. But my usual team wasn't working, probably a lot like most of you. But life is a series of choices that we all have to go through. <clears throat> well, I, I just drew a blank. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> You're all right. Pick up, pick up from there. And I got you. <clears throat> yeah, I drew a blank on that one. Okay. Do you need to start over? Well, let's we'll go. Yeah, let me start over, man. Hold on. You cool? You sorry, cool. my girl. Sorry, my my girl's in the process of making the bed and everything, and it kind of like threw me off. <clears throat> okay. Let, let me. While you moving, Heavenly Father, please bless this interview. I thank you for my brother's time and mine. Help us to help some fathers. Help us to help some men. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So we might, since I'm, since for some reason I'm drawing on a blank like that, we'll start over. <clears throat> All right, um, we'll start with the, uh, my God is real. I'll give you that one. Okay, did you do that last time? Yes. Oh yeah, they already heard that one. Yeah. Okay, we're going to, all right, let me do this one. Uh, love letter. All right. <clears throat> all right, uh, hey, it's me. You see, it's just about 12 o'clock. You see, I was laying in my bed thinking about you, so I thought that we should talk. You see, I constantly get these feelings. Feelings is tough to describe. And no, it's not for my lack of effort either, because I tried everything that I have inside. <clears throat> you see, you've never turned your back on me, and you also helped me swallow my pride. I also cherish those nights whenever it was just you and I, those times whenever we both laughed and cried. You see, I lied when I said I didn't need you and denied the signs you sent too. And yet when I got down to my lowest point, it was only you that came here and brought me through my chaos, my confusion, my pain, my deceit. You became all I had to depend on, my strength when I was weak. And as I write these words in ink, which are inspired by the ones you speak, words like the ones you spoke the day you swept me off my feet. I did what you asked me, though. You see, I finally learned to take things slow and tell other people about the love that you have for me, even to the ones that I don't know. And I know I'm going to let it show, but my love for you burns with a passion. So I make it a point to put my love into action with every single shape, form, or fashion. And I know this goes without asking, but I need you to hold my hand and help me understand the things in life that are too hard for me to comprehend. Things like how to be a man and where I should draw my line in the sand and how to read the blueprints you drew up so I can do it the way it should plan. You see, I'm not trying to demand these things, Father. It's just simply a request. You said not to lean on my own understandings. And besides, you know me best. You told me that salvation shall be mine, but the Father, I'm yours to keep. And whether or not I wake or sleep, it's your kingdom that I will seek. You see, I know that I'm unique, but my troubles are pretty much the same. 
as the next man that I struggle with, so I want to come to you now in Jesus' name and ask that you bring me peace. I want to ask that you bring me laughter and give me the ability to deal with the pain that comes from here on after. I want to thank you for who you are and taking care of my sin and giving me another chance to become a better man again. Amen. Amen. When I, when I, when I, when I wrote that one, I had been writing spoken word, the spoken word, the spoken word, and it was always about what I was going through. And I wanted to write one as an appreciation to God, you know, and um, pretty much just speak to him what's on my mind, like, like, a, like an intimacy thing, you know? <clears throat> so. Did an excellent job. So you've been home a little bit over a year and a half now. And what yes. I find really admirable is that off of our other interview, you just spoke a little bit about your relationship with your children. Can you tell me what your relationship before incarceration was with your children and now what it is as of today? Okay, well, before I was incarcerated, I, man, I was not about the family life. I was about street life. And I put my kids third at times for a lot of things. And what it did was it, it, it created a lot of distance and <clears throat> a lot of hurt. And it was, you know, so much in fact hurt with me, but I didn't realize the hurt that I was causing both of my kids uh, and the letdown and the, the disappointment, you know, stuff like that. And the relationship that that they see, the way they, the way they looked at me was they had pity for me. Uh, they felt sorry for me. Um, there was times whenever they would just tell people, man, I just wish she would grow up, especially my daughter. You know, and for, for your kid to wish that their parent would grow up is alone, uh, that by itself is a, is, uh, is heartbreaking, you know? Um, so I knew that when I was incarcerated, I had time to, you know, we all know I got my life turned over to Christ, you know, and read self-help books, you know, took classes and this and that. But the main thing that I did was pray. You know, um, there wasn't a day that went by that I did not pray and ask God for me to have the opportunity to have my kids back in my life. And even though I couldn't hear him at times, I felt it that, you know, it says, you know, the one ministry that he gives all of us is a ministry of reconciliation. That's right. You know, and so I, I, I remembered that I, I buried that in my heart and I knew that on his time that it would happen. You know, I don't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. You know, if, if my kids were to never speak to me again, I would have understood that because the way I did them. So <clears throat> over, over time and gradually, man, while I was in prison, me and my daughter's relationship was mending. She didn't trust me yet, which, you know, by all means, I, I don't blame her. You know, uh, for the longest I talked to good game, make you believe whatever, whatever I wanted you to believe and get whatever I wanted out of you, you know? And my daughter was hip to that. She knew her, she knew what her dad was like. My son, not so much. He was too young. Um, after I got out, it just seemed like it was more along the lines of me not telling them what I was going to do and how it was going to go. I had to show them. And that's what it takes to mend any relationship. You got to put more action instead of the words you say. Uh, and it probably took a period of four months of me being out for them to actually see my walk. And it's not just them. It was their moms. You know, their moms had to make sure that I was, I was doing what I said I was going to do. I was going to walk the way I said I was going to walk. <clears throat> and with that, God was able to soften their hearts, you know, but my prayers never stopped when I was out of prison. I stayed praying. I stayed praying for reconciliation. I stayed praying for, for guidance you know people say that that you know you pray and pray and pray but you never see results well that's that's not right that's not that's absolutely wrong because okay results came 
for me, the results came not overnight. They didn't come two or week, three weeks later. They came over a period of four or five months. The things that I was praying for, I started seeing come into action. You know, um, everything's a process. So now, after a year and a half, man, uh, my kids are, they're, they're a constant in my life. Um, my daughter is always at over here at my house, man. She's, I mean, like she's here right now, as a matter of fact. And, um, she, she needs her dad time, you know, uh, my son, man, he is, he's 10 now and reminds you, I've, I hardly ever was able to be in his life. Cause I'd been back and forth in jail his whole life. Um, our relationship is solid, man. We're good. Me and his mom's relationship is solid. It's like we're best friends. You know, we 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 don't argue. They they come to me for advice and guidance. Um, and I, it's hard to explain, bro. If if I could explain it, it wouldn't be a god thing. Okay. Um, but the okay. relationship that he's mended with my kids are amazing. You know. Um, and I, 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 it just happened, you know, um, next year, my son is going to try to come live with me. Uh, okay. so that's another, that's another big step right there, you know, uh, and his mom get this, his mom was okay with it, you know? So it's the, it's not only the relationship with my kids that God has transformed and fixed. It's with their moms as well. You know, he took it, he took it another step further. You know what I mean? When I heard when you were speaking, living what you're saying and prayer before, during, and even after. So I, I appreciate you sharing that and your success, bro. And I define a success as the things that you know that you are responsible to take care of. You're not only taking care of them, but you're sharing with others little tidbits, how they might be a success also. So on that note, COVID right. has affected the job market, but you, in spite of your past, you have held down a job for over a year and a half. What are some keys to you being able to be employed during, if not the hardest, one of the hardest times in American history to hold down a job? Uh, well, um, I guess I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't allow another option to do it. Um, yeah, I was blessed enough to be able to have a job to where it was still working through the COVID. Um, and, and that was a lot of help, but, um, see, I've had three jobs since I've been out of prison. My first job, I wasn't getting paid that much, you know, but I needed a job. We call it a stepping stone. It was a survival job. It got me rooted and got me to where I needed to be. Um, when it was time for me to make another step forward, I was able to get another job the same day with higher pay, um, which was a blessing. So that was good for a while. Um, and, you know, there's, man, you just got to have the motivation. I mean, if you're not motivated to get up in the morning and go make money or, or, or get yourself right, then you're not everyone had that motivation. And I just had the motivation. I, I wasn't going to allow myself to fall behind. You know, it's so easy for us to fall behind. Plus, I mean, parole, you got parole always on you. You've got, I mean, you've got things that's gonna, that's gonna keep on putting that fire underneath you. You say, hey, you, you gotta do this. You gotta stay focused, you know? Plus I had brothers and mentors that helped me stay focused and stay on that right path, you know? That is key too. You have to have <laughs> men of like mind that's going to help you and push you and push you and push you. Um, so with that being said, after that job for a little bit, uh, I was able to move back to Waco uh, from Houston to Waco because now I was able to have my kids back into my life. So this was, so this was a period of seven months. After seven months of being out of prison, I was finally moving back so my kids would be back in my life. So in the process of doing that, since I've been in Waco, God opened the door for me. 
now I have a job, man, uh, that is benefits, um, paying me great pay, you know, and no, it's, let me say, it's not always about pay, but to survive that pay is good. And a lot of us men are looking for that to be able to, to provide for the family. So I'm making over $20 an hour and it's a job that helps me get to where I need to be child supports paid, you know, and these are the, like I said, it's doors that were opening and it's just, it's just motivation, hard work. You know, I know that sounds cliche, but that's what it takes. You know what I mean? Um, if, if, if you don't have your mindset on it, then you're not going to get it. You just got to have that, you got to have your mindset, you know, I, I wasn't going to allow myself to fall behind and I wasn't going to let them stand in the way of it. But again, again, I don't do it by myself. I don't do it without prayer. I don't do it without getting focused in the morning and getting into some devotions, getting into my word. Uh, hopefully I can have time to do that, make prayer. If I'm, on, if I'm on the way to work and I'm in a rush, I'm praying on the way to work. I don't do it without God, man. It's only by God's grace that I'm where I'm at today. And with that, I, I have a sense of peace and a sense of strength, man, that, that, that helps me look at the positive. You know, I don't fall into the negativity. Everywhere you go, there's going to be negatives. But there's a lot of positives and everything. And that's something else, too, that I look forward to. So right now in your life, personally, because I'm seeing the fruit of God work in your life, what is God doing personally in you right now? Well, uh, we we are, I say we, because I have a team of people with me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kicking off a ministry now. It's called um, uh, Renovated Ministries and, you know, Renewed Minds, Renewed Lives, Renewed Spirits. Uh, renovated is another word for renewed, you know? So God gave me that vision. And here lately, man, we've been going to the streets. Uh, we have so far had two events uh, where we're feeding the homeless, going down there, we're barbecuing with them. Uh, we're giving them clothes, blankets, shoes, scarves, hats, um, whatever whatever is, is, is able at that time of our leisure to give to them, we're giving to them. Uh, the first event, we had 20 people that were homeless show up. I only expected five, Sean. The second time, I only expected 20. Sean, we had 50 plus people show up. Um, everyone got fed, everyone got clothed, uh, and, and, and everyone got a sense of fellowship, rejuvenated. This time, we're going uh, on the 24th. Uh, we're going back to them, we're going to cook some more, barbecue with some more, fellowship some more, and this time we're handing out hygiene packs. Um, God is moving so much in my life right now, man, that sometimes I, I, I steal. Even though I know he can move mountains, if, if called for, he can give me the ability to walk completely through them. But still, when I see the things that God has moved for me and has allowed for me, man, I, I sit back. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. You know, it blows my mind. You know, um, I didn't think. I didn't, I, I, I didn't think that I would be doing things that I'm doing now. I knew I had the desires to do it, but I didn't think I'd be able to have, them, have it actually take play. And God has made that available for me. And it's, it's brought so much joy in my life right now, Sean. I can't even, I can't describe it, man. I'm so, I'm content and happy right now, bro. I can see it on your face. And that, that's a blessing. I'm hearing it, but just seeing it on your face. If you had to look back, and say there was one thing that you took away from being incarcerated that is a positive in your life, what would that be? One thing a positive in my life that I took from being incarcerated? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, it would be the brotherhood. It would be the brotherhood that I gained there. Uh, and we're not talking about brotherhood as, as, as not only friends, uh, a brotherhood that I gained through mentors, uh, counseling, um, and the fact that I was able to stay connected in LinkedIn. That, that is the biggest positive in my life that has helped change my life and helped me keep going. Being LinkedIn and staying connected is, is key if you want to be successful. 
isolation is dangerous. Don't ever get out there and try to do it by yourself. You need help. Uh, any man just coming out of prison, whether you've been locked up three years, five years, or 20, you need help. You know, you know. sometimes you got to put that pride aside, that humble, and, and get rid of that mentality where oh, I'm going to go out here and get it on my own. It doesn't work out that way. We need help. And uh, the brotherhood and the connection, man, is, is the most positive thing and the, mo and the one thing that has helped me out most physically um, since I've been out. You and, you and me both. If you were speaking right now to lawmakers who are considering making changes to help facilitate a change of mind in the midst of people who are incarcerated, what would you share with them? Something that they may need to know when they're making decisions concerning people who are incarcerated that would help them better prepare for society? Uh, let me see. I think the a mentor program, um, a lot of prisons don't offer that. You know, um, where we were was the one place that I've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if the prisons were able to um, in incorporate that more in other prisons and bring others back and, and mentor them, help them, you know, not, not so much teach them, but to be able to connect with them, talk to them, get to know each other, to see where the weaknesses are. I think a lot of the times now we, the system is too busy trying to teach them something and, 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 and say, look, this is how you need to do it. Instead of being able to have a one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, confrontation with them and being able to get to know them and act like, and figure out why and where they're at and how to fix the problem that way. And I think the best way of doing that is through mentoring. So on that note, if you were at a church or you were at an event and I told you, say there's 50 men out here and they're all considering being mentors, but they're teeter-tottering on should I or shouldn't I, what would you say to them? Uh, well, you know, if you don't ever want to straddle the fence anyway, you know, you're, you're either all in and you're not. You know, um, if if you feel it in your heart, you feel it. You want it. You have a desire. We all have a desire to help people. I mean, it's something that God created us and designed us to do. We have that. You know, it, it's inbred in our DNA. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of times, if you're on the fence about doing something like that, it's because you got other circumstances in your life that's holding you back. You know, um, you know, if you it, you need to be all in. Because if you're all in, then you're going to put everything you've got in the help lifting his brothers up and sprints in prison. If you're just half in and you're tears tottering, man, uh, then you're then you're not going to give it all you got. You're always going to have a distraction. There's always going to be something that's that's holding you back from doing everything you can for these people. And if you're if you're ready to go in there, man, you got to be all about them. You know, you got to be willing to be there for them. You got to be willing to show them and, and teach them, answer questions when they get mad or get upset. How to react to that? You know. Uh, you're dealing with a different type of mentality. You know, a lot of these guys don't know what love feels like, you know? So it's important to go in there and show them an unconditional love, show them that father's love, show them what it looks like, you know? Um, so I, my suggestion on that would be is to wait till you're all in. That's, that's key, you know? That's good advice, good advice. So you know we've reached a point in the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Well, how you been lately? I've been busy. I've, I've <laughs> I see been that. Busy. So I, I see, let, I, I see, when the, I say I I've been see busy, the interviews all the time. To be able to accomplish some things to help others, I have to learn myself. And so me learning about me continually and learning what I need to do to every day be successful, that takes work, that takes prayer, that takes studying, it takes listening to individuals such as yourself. And so I've been doing a lot of that. 
Another thing that I've been doing is looking towards what's next. I'm involved in some different social platforms. I just joined one the other day called Clubhouse. And my sole reason for joining these different social platforms is to share, to help someone, but at the same time, be able to learn about it <clears throat> through involvement so that I can pass that on to some other men to where some people are like, hey, this is my niche. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. I can be able to tell them from experience, hey, look, well, this is a good platform for you to do that on. And finally, I have just been enjoying the fact that I had a good Christmas and a good happy new year with family here in Austin. And it was just a blessing, bro. You know, not yeah. waiting on the food, not hoping we get enough on the tray, you know, but actually having enough, having it warm, having camaraderie, having fellowship. I've been enjoying life. So that's what I've been up to. You know what I did enjoy was the snow. Uh, the snow here surprised, uh, you know, I, I knew I knew it was gonna snow, but I had no idea it was gonna snow the way it snowed here. I think here in Waco, brother, we had, Eight inches. Uh, I I know we had over four. Inches. I'm thinking it was about six inches. Okay. Uh, of okay. Snow. That's, um, I, I came home from church, and it hadn't started, and all of a sudden it started, and I was like, "Say, I have got to go Facebook Live for this." I said, "I've yeah. got plates flying everywhere," because a lot of people in Texas, honestly never experienced snow. And so I went out there real quick and you know, I'm talking about what's coming up in 2021, but then I made a snowball because the reason I did that, one time I took a friend to Iowa and we come out of a little restaurant, I started hitting him with snowballs. And when I started hitting him, he was just standing there looking at me and I said, man, what's wrong with you, man? And then he figured it out. And then when we got in the car, I said, what was wrong? He said, man, I've never been in snow. He said, so when you were doing that, I was just like, what am I supposed to do? And then I, and I realized it. And so I had that thought in my mind. And that's why I made a snowball. And I said, you just make a snowball and you hit somebody. And for those who don't know, you need that fresh snow that sticks together. You can't let it sit. You got to let that fresh snow. And, he, you know, you get it. And one guy, uh, uh, he asked, well, he stated on Facebook, he said, well, what's the use of making a snowball and there's nobody to hit? And I said, well, for me, just the memories, because I hit plenty of people with snowballs. So my <laughs> memories were having fun. <laughs> yep. Yeah, absolutely, man. It was it was a blast, man. And it was a blessing to be able to see, you know. Uh so I I I wanted to uh to tell you, man, that I see I see your work, bro. I I I see the joy in your life as well. Um and you know, I, I've, I've known you now for uh, going on two years, probably, you know, uh, you know, inside. And I've also had the privilege now to know you out here, bro. And um, you're one of the, the few brothers that I know that was the same inside as he is out, you know, and, you, and you're focused. And uh, I, I admire that, bro. I love that, you know, and, um, you know, there's a there's a there was a, a question that was raised up one time that said, it's easy to be a Christian while you're inside the walls. How do you be a Christian when you're outside the walls? And my answer to that is to, uh, you know, in time of peace, be prepared for war. So, you know, when you were in the, when we're in there, there's no distractions. Nothing's coming at you. So that's our time of peace. That's when we that's when we get into the word. That's when you learn. You you are taught. You. You figure out this walk and you get ready for going when you when you go to war because when you're outside these walls when you're outside the walls in the world man every single bit of temptation is going to come at you um so my you know my advice to that question is, is to always you know whenever you don't have the distractions when you're in there get ready for it pray read your word figure out what your weaknesses are analyze yourself you know, and I know that's something that you did, you know, uh, that's something that I did as well, you know, and uh, 
I just want to I just want to tell you, bro, I'm proud of you, man. You you did great, bro. You're doing great, man. I appreciate. And, uh, I know it, God's going to open a lot more doors for you, bro. Thank you. I I really appreciate that. I, that's why I constantly dudes that I know they'll be like, man, I know what, man, what's 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 really good. And I said relationships. And they're expecting me to say this and say that. And I said, relationships, bro. I said, look, jobs come and go. Relationships, they continue even on into heaven. Right. And so I'm appreciating the relationships. So when you say that, I take words like that and I just tuck it down. And then when days are hard <clears throat> or, you know, like, it's snowing and you might not want to go to work or something like that. I just pull up a comment that encourages me and just, okay, got to get it. I tell the youth that I work with all the time. I said, don't get caught up in everyday work. Do the work, but have a goal beyond the work. I said, if we do a good job here, that leaves a place for the people behind us. And so that's why I don't get bored. That's why I'm not, not motivated because I'm not just thinking about the job. I'm thinking about people after me. I'm thinking about the people that were working around. And when you begin to allow your mind to operate like that, you don't get bored. And when you get frustrated, you come back to a focus and you finish strong. So I appreciate that encouragement. I thank you for your time tonight. I'm glad we didn't have uh, any technical difficulties like last time. And yeah, yeah. do what you do, man. And I'm going to keep you up in prayer, all right? All right, brother, man. It was good talking to you, bro. All right, God bless. You too.